Few parts of the wine world get more attention or recognition than France. But even within France, there are some places that tend to elude the spotlight. The great news about these lesser known areas is that they offer some of the best values that your money can buy. If you like a party, and especially if white and sparkling wines are your thing, then we should celebrate Alsace, France. On the eastern edge of France, at the border with Germany, is a land that seems almost a world unto itself. Isolated by the Vosges Mountains to the west and the Rhine River to the east, the region of Alsace has been a part of France and Germany at one time or another. Bandied back and forth over the centuries, repeatedly annexed during war, actually five different times, until ultimately it became a permanent part of France after World War II. You can see why Alsace resembles both countries, but in its heart wants to be neither. Because of its cooler, northerly location, Alsace hangs at the very edge of grape growing limits. In order to make the most of the long growing season, most vineyards are situated on the gentle slopes of the Vosche Mountains and face south to get as much sunlight as possible. Where other parts of the world are wrapping up harvest in October, Alsace is still picking grapes in November. This area consists of no less than 20 different types of soil. Alsatian winemakers are very adamant about these soils and what effect they'll have on the wines produced. No surprise, the grapes that grow here are a mix of French and German varieties, and because of the cooler climate, white grapes dominate the landscape as they need less ripening. The most popular grape is by far Riesling and considered to make the best wines in Alsace. Gewurztraminer and Sylvaner are two other Germanic varieties found here. The dominant French varieties are Pinot Gris, Blanc, and Pinot Noir, which is the only red grape grown in this region. There's an assumption because Alsace is so close to Germany that these wines are going to be sweet. Most people are surprised to find that Alsatian wines are typically dry. If I could sum up this region's wines in a word, it would be naked. Alsatian winemakers prefer clean wines made from single varieties with as little adulteration as possible. That means you won't see techniques like malolactic fermentation or oak barrel aging here. Let's talk about the winemaker. Established 60 years ago, La Cave des Vignerons de Pfaffenheim is one of the leading producers in Alsace. Like many traditional high-end Alsatian producers, the grapes are hand-picked here, which is a lot more labor-intensive but leads to higher quality fruit and therefore higher quality wines. They use a method of farming called lot raisonné, which means reasons struggle, which minimizes intervention and the application of chemicals. As I was saying, Alsatian wines are fairly stripped down when it comes to style, so it'll be fun to get right down to the heart of each wine. Blanc de Blanc means a white wine made from white grapes. In this case, the grapes are Pinot Blanc and a rare related grape called Auxerrois. And Cremant is a term that's used to designate a sparkling wine that's made in France, but not in the Champagne region. So let's get this party started. And you'll notice that I didn't swirl this wine. We don't swirl sparkling wines because you know, swirl the bubbles right out of them. It's got a really fine mousse on it. Uh, the mousse is just another term for the bubbles. Cremant wines are aged in the bottle, just like high quality champagne, which leads to a higher quality mousse. There's the expected yeastiness that comes from bottle aging of a sparkling wine, some apple and pear, and a very dominant note of flint or mineral. But all of that technical stuff aside, this is like a polar bear plunge for your tongue. <laughs> it's so crisp and refreshing and brisk, it just wakes you up. Chef Tori Salmon put together a beautiful dish to pair with this wine. It's a black cod over cauliflower with poblano honey vinaigrette. And I think the sweetness of the honey is a great foil for the dryness of the wine. This is the Faf Excellence Brut. This one is made with three separate grapes, uh, Pinot Blanc, Auxerrois, and Chardonnay. The first thing that comes out of the glass to me is almost like a, a dairy essence. It smells like cold cream or half and half. So let's see if the taste is consistent with the nose. Winery websites often use a lot of market speak and floral language to describe their own wines. And in the case of this one particular wine here, uh, they describe this as tasting and smelling like almonds and cake icing. Funny, but they nailed it. Yes, I taste cake icing. There's almost an amaretto and buttercream finish on this wine. It's amazing. We're pairing this wine with a baked brie pasta carbonara. The creaminess of the brie, the creaminess of the egg yolk, as well as the saltiness of the prosciutto are gonna bridge very nicely with the acidic creaminess of this wine. So let's move on to this beautiful rosé. 
This is the Vigneron de Pfeffenheim Rosé Brut, and it's 100% Pinot Noir. By local law, all Rosé Cremant d'Alsace has to be made from Pinot Noir. Strong strawberries, raspberries, kind of like a creamsicle almost. Of course, it's fresh and clean, and there's this bouquet of raspberries and cherries in there. But what I like about these wines so far is that they're just fun at a visceral level. I don't have to think about it too much. Just tasting them makes me happy. So let's talk about a dish to pair with this wine. We're partnering this one up with an Indian spiced French toast. You have sweet challah, creamy hollandaise, curry, and spicy ginger. They're all going to come alive with a wine like this. And that brings us to our only still wine in the group here. And I figured I would save this for last because it's different than the rest of them. This is the Faf Cuvée Jupiter Riesling. It's grown on limestone and chalky clay soil, which are known to produce lighter wines of elegance. And for this one, we're gonna swirl the wine. It's citrusy, zingy, it tingles your tongue. There's a viscosity to it, sort of a creaminess there. And Tons of tropical fruit in there as well. And finally, there's that hallmark presence of mineral and petrol there that you just come to expect out of a high quality Riesling. As far as white wines are concerned, Riesling is one of the few grapes that can age for a really long time. I'd actually give this one five to 10 years and come back to see how it was doing. A classic Riesling of this caliber pairs famously with Asian dishes. And for that reason, we're gonna partner it up with a peanut noodle stir fry and shrimp. So who doesn't love French wine? But every once in a while, you want something a little bit different. I hope you've enjoyed this journey down the path less traveled. The wines of Alsace are fresh, clean, brisk, fun, and inspiring. Thanks so much for joining me for this weekly tasting. On behalf of Wine Still Sold Out, I'm Mark Supsik. Cheers.